the song that made you most famous, I believe, was Girls Just Want to Have Fun, right? Was that what the big did one? It was, now, Girls Just Want to Have Fun would have gone by the wayside had there not been time after time right after it. Girls Just Want to Have Fun. You introduced number two. Number two, and you introduced that song with, with your whole wrestling connection, yeah. WWF at the time. Because at the time, Howard, radio wasn't playing Girls Just Want to Have Fun. They said we had a note from the best... Um, program director in the country that said they would talk to us and tell us you know how we could adjust my career because girls just want to have fun would never be played on top 40 and is not album radio because i sing too high so you you wisely now i understand this wwf well, connection Dave wolf loved wrestling and it was his idea and he said I have another idea. I'm going to put you on WWF, yeah. and you play Girls Just Want to Have Fun on the Friday WWF. Friday night, Saturday morning, and Saturday night. He said you'd get three hits in a weekend. He found an alternative way to distribute the music, yeah. not using the radio. Yeah, and, and it paid off. we did promotion and we had fun. And so the record starts to sell from the WWF fans. They go, hey, we want to get a copy of this Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And well, it- that wound up on E.T., as a news item. Cindy also gets some help from a former professional wrestler. I, Captain Lou Albano, the maker of champions, predict that Cindy Lauper will be the greatest entertainer of all time. And all of a sudden, what we were doing was bleeding over to all these different mediums. And we were having a riot. So we said, okay, now we know what we're doing. And, right. And so it was on MTV. It was on news. It was. I didn't realize the wrestling had such an effect on your career. A yeah. positive. Because I was like, why is she doing that? I was already aware of you as an artist. I was like, why is she doing all that wrestling? But that makes sense to me. Well, I stayed. You thought outside the box. Yeah, but I stayed because it was the one place that Dave Wolf and I could still work together as equals, not as. Just, he's your manager. Is your favorite song that you do, the, the, the True Colors? Oh. To me, that's my favorite one you do, you know. Really? I yeah. like Sally's Pigeons. I like, um... I feel that is your most raw performance. Oh, it's naked. It's yeah. It's naked. And Murray turned that song down. True Colors was a song that was pitched to Anne Murray. Right. And my friend Gregory had passed away, and... At that age, when you have friends, you don't think, you think you're going to live forever, I guess, and be old and sipping mint juleps. Not that I like what that tastes like, but the idea of it at the Pink Hotel somewhere, you know. Right. And uh, it didn't happen. So we were very sad. You know, uh, we had the funeral. I was doing the song, and all of a sudden, I stripped the song down because mm. it was, you know, it was pitched for Ann Murray, so it had sounded like country western gospel and right i just was working with peter wood at the time and he um i said just make the chords that we use so he kind of you know, did different voicings and i stripped it down and just sang with the keyboard and then when i went back in to the studio lenny was working with me and i said you know i just want the voice to be like when someone's driving in a car you hear it in your ear like a whisper, and everything in the song has to call to your soul. Mm. So I put a drum sound that was kind of an archaic, um, like an old, old, sounded like an ancient drum, you know, right. call to the soul, and then kind of whisper in the ear, and it was a healing song, so I thought that that would be the best way to heal people on a medium that does not have that kind of music on it ever. Right. And so, I mean, Girls Just Want to Have Fun kind of healed people too. And it didn't have that kind of sound on it ever either. So I took a chance. And, of course, the promotion guys were like, Son, where's the music? Come on, you're killing me. You know. Right. But it couldn't take a lot of music because once it did, when the lyric is that... um, uh honest and deep and sentimental you, you strip it down yeah you don't put more sentimentality on top of it or over sing it because then it becomes sticky and cheesy and schmaltzy 